Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the dual sniper rifle CP unit for the Koenig Wolf from Kotobukiya. We're going to unbox the kit, check out the gimmicks, and see what it looks like mounted on the wolf, of course. Let's get started. RoboShop. Alright, so let's start with the box here as per usual. On the front, of course, we have a uh, depiction of the Koenig Wolf with all of the uh, extra weapon parts uh, added to him. The shoulder armor here, the missile launchers and the big cannon that goes on the back, of course. Um, and then here on the side, I think this is pretty interesting, we've got Again, of course, all the parts, but then aside from the, uh, aside from the wolf, uh, we also have these two photos showing that you can uh, potentially also use these parts with the uh, Redler, which this looks pretty cool. Uh, or, of course, you put it on the back of the shield like here. Uh, I might try this as well. I don't actually have a... Um, an HMM shield lager, well, not a built one, <laughs> um, and I doubt it's going to work with the blade lager. And then here on the sides, it's a little hard to show because of the size of the box, we've got all the parts here, again, the same thing here, and uh, here is just a whole bunch of text, so not too much to look at on the outside here, which means we should probably just be cracking this open. Now, let's see here. We've got, first of all, let me get this out of the way. Um, this is the uh, shoulder armor pieces. Then we have a sprue with the mechanical bits for the, uh, for the big cannon here. It's just sort of a pretty nondescript gray. And uh, this is, it is actually white and not some weird uh, off-white collar, which uh, personally I'm all in favor of. Then here we have uh, this um, sort of pin looking bolt piece. I don't know where that goes. Um, and uh, we have teeth evident. Oh no, <laughs> no, this is the, this is the ammo belts uh, that feed the, uh, that feed the main cannon. And we note that while this is it's a reasonably okay looking gold plaque, pra uh, gold plastic, sorry, can't get my words out today. It's a reasonably okay looking gold plastic, um, but that's not the important part. The important part is that these are not made of rubber because, you know, the uh, there's this ammo belt that comes with the, um, the Redhorn Gatling cannon and potentially also the add-on parts for the Shield Lager Mark II and they are made of rubber, which makes them terrible to paint. So this is really good. Uh, we've got more caps here and sort of a nice forest green. Um, furthermore, we have uh, more mechanical bits for the cannon. This is um, a slightly metallic, but not entirely color. It's different from the gray. Um, of the chassis parts here. This is the standard dark gray again. Um, and then we have this is the this is the barrels for the cannon here, the missile launchers, and good news, because we are, you know, it's 2023, the missiles are actually molded in white. And they go into these holes here. So you're not going to have to paint those uh, if you're that kind of a person. And if you are going to paint them, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier because you're not looking at like a missile launcher where you have to paint the tips of the missiles. Uh, I don't know how many of you have built and uh, painted the uh, HMMD Bison, but that kit, of course, has the missile launchers on the head, which are just one big solid piece, and then you have to paint the tips of the missiles. Which, you know, is not the most difficult thing in the world, but it's nice that they're, it's nice that the color separation is actually uh, done this way. Uh, and then we have uh, clear, clear pieces and orange pieces. 
and this is actually the same sprue. So we have the entirely clear and we have the uh, translucent orange meaning that if you don't like the orange you have the same parts here so that you can paint them any color you want which is fantastic. Um, and uh, finally we have first of all a lot and I have to say it's a lot of um, water slide decals here. We have you know an RZ insignia, a helic insignia, it says here CP22, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, I don't actually have the CP22 from Tomy, the uh, extra parts that came out for the motorized Koenig Wolf, but I'm, I'm guessing this is just the sticker sheet that came with that CPU and it turned into water slides, which is exactly what you want. And then finally, we have the instructions here, which don't have an outside cover. Uh, it just starts with uh, the sort of the general instructions of you know how you get parts off of sprues, and then we have a parts list here, and then the instructions for how to put them together, which starts with the uh, cannons. And uh, the bad news, as you can see here, is the cannons are two sandwiched halves. So these barrels are. I don't know, it looks here in the illustration like there's supposed to be a panel line going down the middle, which would mask the, uh, yeah, it actually kind of looks that way. We'll see that, you know, when I've actually put them together, but this, uh, this is of course never good because it may or may not mean that we have a, uh, we have a seam line that we have to putty here. Um, yeah, and then it continues with uh, how you put the uh, missile launchers together and just quick instructions for how you put them on the wolf and no instructions for how you pull this off. Um, I don't recall there being any kind of peg on the bottom of the Redler's wings that would allow you to do this without modification. Although usually when Kotobukiya shows this sort of stuff it's because the parts are actually compatible. So we'll try. Um, and then we have the painting guide in case you want to just uh, paint this uh, in, the, uh, in the exact colors that it's meant to, uh, that it's meant to look like sort of originally. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So uh, you know what's next. I'm going to put this together, slap it on the wolf, and then we'll see what it looks like. All right, so let's take a look at the cannon first. Um, this is what it looks like all folded up. Um, you can already see here a lot of very nice color separation, of course. Uh, now, in order um, to deploy the thing, we, uh, camera here too, by the way, <laughs> In order to deploy the thing, we uh, of course we fold the uh, barrels forward. Um, we extend them like that if we want, um, and then we can also uh, pull this out to reveal a bit more of this hydraulic piston here. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Um, you can also, once it's mounted, I'm probably not going to be able to show this because it's a bit unwieldy. Once it's mounted, you can fold the uh, mount here up like that, uh, which gives you a bit more. Uh, it gives you a bit more mobility, especially if you want to rotate it side to side. Now, um, the uh, missile launchers. I'm just going to show you one set here. The missile launchers attach to uh, this armor piece that goes on the leg. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, they open like so. Um, like I already said in the unboxing, you can see here the missiles are actually separate pieces. So even if you don't paint it, I think it actually looks pretty good. Um, and uh, we have this. They also rotate um, a little, tiny little bit, but I don't think that's really the idea that you rotate these. We also have this um, shoulder piece here that has uh, a little bit of a clear part here. This is really difficult to attach by the way and I'm going to have to get it out again eventually when I want to paint this which I'm already dreading. Uh, that reminds me though uh, in case you skip the unboxing all of these all of these orange clear parts uh, are also included as completely uh, clear pieces in case you want to uh, paint them a different color, which I think is always a great addition. 
Now, how do we attach all this? The first thing I have to say about that is in order to get the uh, missile launchers mounted on the shoulders here like so, you need to take off um, the, uh, the armor piece, one armor piece on top and one armor piece on the side here if I remember correctly. And uh, prying this side armor piece here off is incredibly difficult and I was very seriously worried I might break it just trying to pry it off. So if you have any intention of going back and forth and taking this on an awful lot, you're going to want to shave down those pegs a little. Uh, which is also why I'm not showing this on camera, by the way. It's basically impossible to do while I'm filming myself. You also need to take the cap out here, which is also, like, it sits really tightly, and it's, it's almost impossible. I had to take this off with a knife, broke the tip off the knife plate, and then I could take the... Uh, then I could take the cap off and now it's scratched underneath here, which, you know, isn't a problem, but still. I'm just telling you, you might want to decide which condition you want to build this thing in and then just leave it that way. So, in order to attach the missile launchers, we have uh, two pegs here, which go here on the leg. Um, to make sure you press this all the way in. This isn't too difficult to get back off, by the way, I'm not worried about that. And this attaches here from the front. And boom, done. Um, and then, yeah, and then you open these and he's, uh, he's ready to go. Now, uh, for the cannon that goes on the back. First things first, I'm not gonna show you these because it's not terribly interesting. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the peg that uh, is meant for uh, mounting this on the wolf. You can also replace this with uh, two other optional pieces either for a three millimeter peg or for a three millimeter peg hole uh, by just basically like swapping out this part that the, uh, the peg sits on. Uh, I will say though, like swapping it out will require you to take the entire assembly apart and um, that's uh, the same as, with, uh, same as with what I just said about the leg armor here. The parts fit is tight. It's not excessively tight, it, the parts fit very well, but taking things apart and putting them back together is, uh, I don't uh, recommend it, um, especially if you like actually having your fingernails attached to your thumbs. So anyway, um, I'm gonna fold this back up and, uh, and show you how it goes on. Um, the easiest way to do it is with, uh, is with this, um, with this folded up like this. Uh, we're gonna wanna take the uh, scope and fold it out of the way just to make it a bit easier. And then uh, this, you know, goes on the peg like so. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, the tail just about fits through the barrels here. And uh, deployment, like I said before, you can do like this um, and have it like sort of sit very close to the back, which I almost think looks better to be honest. Whoop, can't forget the barrels. Um, you can have it like this. Um, or you can um, move it up like so and that then also allows you to sort of have it point up and rotate it and uh, pretty much any way you want to go with it. Um, yeah, and uh, that's it. So let's do some pictures. One last thing I want to point out is that I think the cannon actually complements the overall shape of the Zoid much more than I thought it would, as you can see here. When it's folded up, it sits pretty far back where it actually seems like an extension of the lines that are already there and not some giant clunky thing that's been added on top, so much better looking than I expected, to be honest. So, in closing, I think I can say the same thing about this CP unit that I already said about the Koenig Wolf itself. If you like what you see, there's no reason not to buy it. It's a very nicely detailed and sharply molded kit. Everything on it works very well, and it frankly looks really good, even unpainted like this. And if you do intend to paint it, you get the clear parts, so you're not stuck with the orange. Although, I will say that while that's nice, it's also kind of pointless since you only get clear orange with the actual Zoid, so you're not going to be able to paint those the same way. 
Other than that though, we've got ourselves one heck of a double whammy here. Everyone's been pining for an HMM Koenig Wolf for years, and not only did they do that and did it really well, they also gave us the CP unit that everyone wanted and knocked it out of the park with that one as well. Honestly, I think people would have been happy enough just if these two kits existed, but they're also way up there with some of the best stuff Kotobukiya has ever made, just in terms of objective quality. And I'm going to stop gushing now before I go on for another 10 minutes, so if you like this review, let the algorithm know by doing the youtube -y stuff at the bottom there. Check out my Patreon and PayPal links while you're at it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.